I had my first art sale over the weekend. It went so well. I could not believe how well it went. It went way better than I ever expected. It was just amazing. It made me feel so positive and so great just to get so many people uh, just looking at my paintings and giving me their positive praise or their feedback and um, or asking questions, being very curious and wanting to know how, um, how I came up with some of the styles that I did or, um, or what it was called and just things like that. It was just really fun and uh, so I did my first booth with my friend Jen and she is a Reiki instructor and she works on spiritual healing and meditation, um, guidance and uh, life coaching and things like that. And um, she helped me get the ball rolling on this uh, journey that I am on as well. Um, something that I've always wanted to do, but I let fear get in the way and other situations that have come up in my life that have sidetracked me or roadblocked me. So I finally did it, and I'm really glad I did. I didn't sell a lot. I did bring about 50 pieces to this particular uh, showing, so um, I, I think I had an overabundance of things for people to look at. But however, um, there was something for everyone. There was a, you know, light-colored uh, paintings and very dark, mysterious color paintings and. I had a little bit of everything, some realistic and some abstract. and So anyway, I had every flavor under the moon that people could ask for. Uh, I like a variety, you know, you just never know what um, people are searching for or you don't know what their tastes are. And when you're around that many people, you kind of get a little bit of every, every flavor of people too, with very different styles and tastes. So. Um, so I think it was successful. It, it went very well. Like I said, I didn't sell very many. I only sold seven paintings, but for me, even selling one is a huge success. Like I was just happy to be there and and have somebody tell me that they enjoyed looking at my paintings. Lots of children there. Uh, children were very curious, and um, I got to talk to some amazing kids who uh, were able to see some of the things that I saw in my own paintings uh, through our own imagination and creativity which is very cool and I also got some sign-ups for classes which I'm very super excited about it's got my brain rolling and I got a lot of ideas to share with different groups of people uh, young and old yeah so the future is bright I'm gonna see um, how that goes and journey from there and see where life takes me from there so anyways, today I'm going to uh, combine two different techniques together and I've done this before and it turned out really well. I'm going to start with a dirty pour and then blow it out like as in a Dutch pour. So I'm going to combine those two techniques and see what we come up with. So I'm going to get started by um, wetting my canvas down with a base color and here we go. laid down so this gets kind of tricky um, because I'm using the two different techniques and I want to keep some negative space on the canvas I start out with a semi thick uh, paint texture um, so the base would look something like this and you can see that the paint can form a mound right with it before it sinks down into the rest of the paint and so it's quite thick and it doesn't move around very well um, so that's how I keep my negative space on the canvas because once I blow it out the 
the thinner paint that's in the center that I'm blowing out tends to stop. It gets stuck in the thicker paint and then I'm able to keep some negative space on the canvas. So I'm keeping some edges very thick and some areas very thin so that um, I do get some runoff in some areas but not every area. Make sense? I hope so. So then after I use the thick base paint, I'm going to water it down with some water. I've already added flow chal to the mix, so I don't need to add any more of that. I'm just going to add some more water to it. Not too much though, because if you have more water than there is paint, doesn't bond correctly and then you get cracking and splitting in your painting maybe not even right away but it will happen over time and so you have to be very careful not to put any more than about 30 percent of water compared to paint inside your painting because these are compound elements and if you know your chemistry bonding elements get too far apart and they don't connect or they don't combine together, they won't hold. And so you want your paint to hold up over time and stay together and uh, too much water will dilute the solution too much and they won't bond. And it does take a minute to allow the paint and the water to set because you do want all those elements to bond together completely all the way through. So I do let my paint sit for a minute. See now it's much thinner. It's not mounding up. You can write with it a little bit before it sinks, but there are no mounds, so it's not thick at all and there's more movement. I always wear a mask when I'm torching, protect myself. I do this often enough where I'm overexposed to this, so I want to protect myself as much as possible, and so should you if you're doing this at home. It's important to uh, release the bubbles, and I have a painting in which I must not have gotten all the bubbles out because I can see where they popped, and I will show you a close-up of that. And. Um, so you can see why it's so important to pop the bubbles. Mm -hmm. 